All right, uh, welcome to the program, guys. Uh, we have Rubindu Piris, the General Secretary of SASCOM, and Akshita Diora Puram, Entrepreneurial Instructor from MIT, here to talk about the MIT Global Startup Labs Initiative 2014. Akshita, first tell us, give our viewers a brief overview mm -hmm. of what exactly Global Startups MIT Labs is. So it's an MIT program, mm -hmm. and basically the program is set to promote student entrepreneurship. What we do at MIT is set up different programs around the world, different countries, and send instructors from an entrepreneurship side as well as a technical side to promote startups. Um, and in the two-part focus, one is to actually say student entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship to focus on change, but also build um, principal leaders. Mm -hmm. And that's one of our biggest focus, and that's what we're here in Sri Lanka for. Now, this program has been active in Sri Lanka for the past three years. 2014 is the fourth year that this program is That's right. underway. Mm -hmm. What is actually different about this year, Ruindo? Yeah, so this year I think is different in a few areas. Uh, predominantly, um, I think it's also different for the whole MIT program as well globally, where it's the first time that we've extended the six to seven week program to a six month program. Mm -hmm. um, we've also been able to take it national. The first three programs were focused primarily with the Moritu University. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's typically the model that MIT follows. They go into a country, they, they work with one of the preeminent universities, uh, and then kind of expect that university to help take it um, across the country. Um, they should do for about five years, is what I understand, in mm -hmm. the case of Sri Lanka. Uh, we kind of preempted that after the third year. Mm -hmm. uh, saw a lot of potential. The industry as a whole was uh, very positive and very uh, optimistic about the potential of this program. So we have made it a national program. We've opened it up to not only university students, but also graduate students, or recent graduates mm -hmm. for that matter. And um, it's been extremely encouraging to see the, the response we got from the last time that we were here in the studio promoting the program. Mm -hmm. um, you know, from that point onwards, we had over, we actually went and spoke to probably about 500, 700 students um, across universities, different institutes. Um, had an interest of about 380 students and, and applicants overall who came to the site and registered. Mm -hmm. uh, narrowed that down to the top 75 um, who are now kind of going to the program uh, in the first phase of it. We'll get to the program in detail in a bit, Ruvinder, but first I want to ask, mm -hmm. earlier years uh, this program was actually mainly focused on the technological aspect, mobile app development and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Is it the same thing this time around as well or is it uh, diversified? Mm -hmm. So in the past year, it was focused solely on mobile app development, but the difference this year, along with the length of the program, is the focus on technology as well. So not just the mobile app development, but if you wanted to actually create a prototype um, within tech. And we all, uh, you know, even with the teams that we have right now, which is 16 amongst the, the students, the student crowd, and we have about one-fourth that is actually going down the technical aspect of it and building out these tech technology prototypes versus just the mobile apps. What exactly is the goal of MIT Global Startup Labs? I mean, have you all succeeded in what you've been doing for the past four years? Definitely. I think the, uh, the overall goal from a Sri Lanka perspective is to, uh, to make a change in the mindset overall. I think that will probably be the largest impact that we're looking for is to, um, to really kind of see the true potential of Sri Lanka in terms of harnessing our innovation and our capability to be entrepreneurs. Um, and and SLASCOM as, as a body kind of where we foresee the opportunity for particularly the technology sector is for Sri Lanka to be the innovation hub for Asia. Um, there's tremendous opportunity just in our backyards. And, and Sri Lanka is poised in a very interesting position where we have very high, we have great access to extremely talented individuals. Um, at a very interesting competitive price point. Um, and also given the fact that we're in the backyards of some of the fast emerging countries where we know the shift is happening from the west to the east and particularly with China, India, Bangladesh, you know, those areas are just, you know, bursting out of the seams mm -hmm. in terms of the middle class emerging, a lot of disposable income happening. Uh, and it's much easier for someone in that region to be able to suss out the opportunity and be able to capitalize than it is for someone all the way from the West to be able to do that. And that's the opportunity that we foresee and we want to kind of set up ourselves mm -hmm. to be able to take, op take you know, opportunity of that. Now you said uh, that this time is not really restricted to mobile app development. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What kind of help are you all giving these applicants who are coming in sure. to start up their businesses? So, so one of the, the, I think the, the most interesting, interesting things and, and areas that we've been able to successfully deliver this time is to bring some of the industry leaders um, that we foresee to be hot industries. Mm -hmm. um, so as an example, we've had 
and, and Brandix, who's the main sponsor of the program, um, is from the apparel industry, which is one of the largest in Sri Lanka and fast growing in the world as well. Um, so we had the apparel industry come in and pitch to the want to be entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and exposing them to the fact that, which I've learned quite a bit myself, the fact that, um, you know, while up to now it's been viewed as one of those kind of um, manually intensive kind of dying industries is mm -hmm. the perception of many. But after listening to Dana from Brandix, it really kind of opened the eyes of all of us to say, hey, wow, this is an industry that's very verging yet, as he put it in his words. Mm -hmm. uh, it's at a point where potentially the Silicon Valley was 30, 40 years ago. A lot of innovation is still ahead. And for those who move on to that early, there's tremendous opportunity and potential. Mm -hmm. um, as, he po as he put it, actually, it's one of the only industries that has, um, you know, a, a non-disposable being made disposable. Right, nothing perishable. Sorry, the word is the non-perishable be made perishable simply because of the inability to manage demand to supply. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of areas to be innovated to be solved using technology platforms. So that's one area. We brought in people from the restaurant industry. It's a multi-billion-dollar industry. A lot of opportunity to be taken advantage of, payments and lending, mobility as a whole. Um, so those are some of the key tourism. Right mm -hmm. again. So we we've, we've kind of brought in industry leaders from these different segments to help uncover very specific opportunities that are disruptive. And that's another big difference that we want to kind of make yeah. uh, make clear about this time is, you know, you get probably one or two, three shots in your life to really kind of go make something big. Um, and if you're doing that, you might as well do something that's meaningful. Um, and to that extent, we really try to make the distinction of incremental disruption, in incremental innovation versus disruptive innovation, right? Really try and do something that's uh, big, massive, has a big impact. How has been the response in Sri Lanka? How many people applied for this year's program? How many people will be selected and put into this final three phases? So I think that in the, in the final three phases, it's not about how many people, mm -hmm. but it's about promoting as many people and trying to push as the mindset of the entrepreneurial um, to as many students as possible. So it's not a really about a set number that will pass through. It's mm -hmm. about actually a discovery phase for the students <coughs> to realize, do they want to be an entrepreneur? Um, do they have the entrepreneurial mindset to make a movement, to make a change? Because everyone's capable of it. It's a matter if they want to put in the effort to, to get there. Um, and so that's going to be our focus in terms of finalizing uh, who you know, goes through the final phases. So the target audience for this year's program yeah. mm -hmm. is undergraduates and graduates, is it? You know, honestly, it's open to anyone. Anyone who has a vision and a passion to be able to do something disruptive mm -hmm. is what this program is for. Now, realistically, what happens, I think, is given that there is full-time commitment, there is uh, <clears throat> there is opportunity cost assessment that has to be made as well. Mm -hmm. By virtue of that, it tends to be that university students seem to be the most um, interested, or mm -hmm. at least are able to come in and say, "Great, let me take a shot at it." Mm -hmm. As you can imagine, for someone who's three, four years into their career, you know, they have other responsibilities. It's hard to take three weeks off your work and say, mm -hmm. I'm going to come in full time, uh, which is what it took um, in this time. And then, <coughs> sorry, in the latter phases, you're talking about five to six weeks to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. That being said, you know, I really do invite um, anyone out there who has found themselves, themselves doing something that truly isn't their passion and isn't something that really kind of brings out the best in them. This is the opportunity, really, to kind of take that, you know, take that jump, mm -hmm. because uh, what the program really offers is is an amazing platform that brings together all the support ecosystems. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just to add to that, I think, you know, there are some amazing people out there that I think are going to do really well. Uh, and Sri Lanka is known for some of its innovative capabilities, and there are some great examples that have been done. The value of this program, I think, is to really help accelerate some of that success. So if someone was going to do really well on their own, um, say in five years, I think this program has the capability to make that two years. If someone had the potential of making a million dollars, I think we can make that a hundred million dollars. That's the kind of you know impact that we've been able to bring together with this program. Mm -hmm. So this is an open invitation to all entrepreneurs in Sri Lanka. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Right. Would you like to add anything to? We well, yeah, no, all I just wanted to add to the point of the opportunity. I think that you know students in general they might be more up, uh, you know looking at all the opportunity costs more will be accessible to be an entrepreneur or want to be an entrepreneur to um, to say that a little bit better. But it's also we want the students to realize or whoever it is that this is an opportunity. This is an opportunity to not just make a change within Sri Lanka because this is the moment to do that. Mm -hmm. And Sri Lanka is at a place where that change can have such a big impact. 
um, but in addition that this program really facilitates it to really allow whatever stage you are, whether it's a, a person that already has a startup, they're working on it, or whether it's someone that just knows that they want to have a startup. Um, whoever it is, this is definitely open to all of those types of people. Now, the 2014 uh, cycle has already begun. The uh, first batch has begun. First batch has begun. So tell us about the second batch. When will you be starting recruitment? Or when right. can people sign up for it? Well, good news. We just started today, and that was really part of the reason we want to come on, uh, come on board and kind of do this segment with you. Um, applications are accessible through the slascom.lk site. You go there, there's a slider. Mm -hmm. um, it'll talk about MIT Global Startup Labs. You click, it takes you through a form. Uh, very simple, you know, you, it's probably gonna take you 10, 15 minutes. But one thing that we do want people, as you go to the application, you'll figure out we, it's very reflective. It, it kind of asks some probing questions about what about yourself do you think really makes you a good entrepreneur? Mm -hmm. uh, we ask for a one minute pitch about why do you want to be part of this program? Um, so it's really, it's not so much about your technical competencies, but a lot more about your mindset and your passion and how much you're willing to put in uh, is what we're assessing as we select the team members into this program. All right, guys, thank you very much for joining us today. And best of luck for this program. Much appreciated. Thanks. Thank you.